Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today we have a story of a man who found out his wife has been cheating on him with her male friend. And this is what he finally did. Here's the full story. I, 45 male, have been married for 15 years to wife, 44 female. We have two kids, and I don't know how to really start this, so here we go. Me and my wife were childhood friends. Not like we were close, cause we really didn't notice each other much until high school. After mutual friends started dating, we saw each other a lot more. At first, we were friends, and then, after I grew a pair of nuts, I asked her out, and she said yes. A little confession, I had a crush on her before the friends started dating, but I kept it to myself. We started dating our last two years of high school, and planned to go to the same college. But after figuring out that her school didn't offer the same program, I had to head to another one. Should have seen a problem when the school I picked had her same program but she told me that it wasn't a place she saw herself. We tried the long distance for a while, but it really didn't work, so we called it quits while we were in college. After a few years, and I graduated from school, we surprisingly bumped into each other during a visit back home. Conversation sparked up a passion of interest, so we stayed in contact, talking almost every day, and reigniting each other's passion. It wasn't long before she had moved into my apartment. It did seem pretty fast now that I think about it, but I can't lie, it just felt right at the moment. My career was going well, and she was just about to graduate for her degree, so everything seemed right. Now, during this time, she had a male friend that I called him, and he was extremely attractive. You know, this guy is a player, and I kinda didn't trust him. Okay, I'll be honest, I didn't trust him at all, and I hated that my girl was his friend. We had many conversations about this, and she promised me, damn near swore to God himself, that she had no romantic feelings for this guy, and they were strictly friends. She believed that if I really trusted her, I wouldn't worry, trusting that she wouldn't do anything to sabotage what we were building. Now, let's fast forward. At this point, my work and home life are competing with each other. The kids need me for this, but I have this and that to do by the end of the week. I'm not gonna lie, I made my mistake, maybe leaning too hard on her or not telling her how much I appreciated her but I always thought it was implied. So one day, I come home from work, and as I walked in, I hear her laughing and giggling. As I head into the kitchen, I notice she was cleaning the dishes, and him was sitting at the island talking to her. As I walked into the room, a slight quietness entered with me, almost like I was the guest in my house, but they both quickly greeted me. Not suspiciously, but enough to fill the silence. Now, me and him weren't friends, but we had a conversation about my uncomfortable feeling about him and my wife. It wasn't long or combative, it was short and simple. Looking back now, he probably got a good laugh at me. But after a few minutes, he left, and it was me and my wife. At this point, I don't know if she was already with him or she was just mad at me for not helping out a lot. But when I went in to get close to her or show her some intimate touch, she rejected me with I'm tired. Had the kids all day or she would start a random argument about something that was so small. This has been happening for the last six months until I just got to the point and asked, is there someone else? And then hell broke loose. She called me every name in the book and even brought up some insecurities that I had. If that wasn't a sign, she didn't talk to me for about a week after that. At this point, I knew there was something going on, so I knew I had to figure it out. I booked her a spa day on my day off and made sure she was completely pampered. While she left the house, me and an electrician buddy placed small cameras around the house. Now, before you say, I wouldn't have done that, I would have left, and you're right. But I was praying that I was going too far. I was hoping that I'd record for a month or three and see that I didn't get anything and then know that I'm an idiot with a great woman that loves me. She came home smiling and even gave me some attention. I thought that maybe the spa day was all she needed, some time to wind down. It was almost like back in the day while it lasted. So after two months of recording, I didn't find anything, and I was so happy, feeling like an idiot for putting these cameras in my house. So I stopped watching the cameras for a while. They were just there, completely out of sight, out of mind. Until one day, I get a notification on my phone telling me that something in the house was ajar or something like that. So I thought I checked the cameras since I can see if one of the kids had broken something. As I'm flicking through the cameras, I stopped on my front door, noticing a black pair of shoes next to another pair. It didn't look like none of my shoes, just from what I can see. So something in me said, go to the bedroom camera. As I look at that camera, there was no one in there, and the bed was still made. For some odd reason, I just kept flicking through the cameras, and then I caught my wife coming out of the laundry room with him behind her. She fixed her clothing, and he was buckling his pants. My heart shattered as I couldn't believe what I was seeing. Everything inside of me wanted to go home and slaughter both of them, I'm not gonna lie. 
But I thought about my kids and how losing both parents won't benefit them. So I shut everything in my office. And ashamed to say, I cried. Can't say how long, but long enough where my eyes felt like they were swollen. After that, I knew what I had to do. As I'm heading home, I'm trying to compose myself for this argument that I know was coming. I called a friend of the family and asked if the kids could stay over for a while so that we can talk. They agreed, and as I arrived home, my wife was cooking, and I can still smell that food like a prisoner's last meal. As I sat down, there was silence. As I looked at her, I pulled out my phone and showed her the video of her and him coming out of the laundry room. All I said was, why? At first, she tried to lie, even with video evidence. But after a while, pursuing it, she finally broke and told me the truth. Her and him had been sleeping together for the last three years we've been married, and she could be pregnant with his child. She said she's sorry I had to find out like this, but since it's all out, she wants a divorce. It hit me hard because I came from a broken family and never wanted my kids to feel the struggle of a separated family. But after hearing that, I got up and went upstairs. As I felt defeated, I've worked my crap off and did all I could to place this family on a pedestal. It felt like someone just kicked it from under me. I wanted to harm myself so bad when I figured that out. But God works in mysterious ways because my daughter called me and told me that she loved me. Not in those words, but it was what I needed to get better. OP, it's devastating that she displayed no regret and could potentially be expecting the affair partner's child while expressing a desire for a divorce. She engaged in a sensual relationship with him within the confines of your home for a span of three years. What a dreadful situation, and she's certainly not the woman you once knew. Promptly conduct DNA tests on your children to ensure their biological connection. It's crucial to share all the evidence with the affair partner's spouse. It's time to take decisive action. Maintain your strength, but acknowledge that the person you married is no longer the same. Safeguard your financial interests by promptly relocating your assets. Hopefully, you have a support network of trustworthy family and friends to rely on during these challenging times. Good luck and stay strong. I just wanted to start by saying that this sub has been really helpful these last two days. Just knowing that I'm not alone in this, and that unfortunately many others are experiencing, have experienced the same thing is helping me keeping my head above the water. Now for a bit of context, we have been happily married for four years, and we have a perfect two years old daughter together. Up until this point, our marriage has been great, at least for me. Of course it evolved, especially with our daughter coming into our lives, less spontaneous dates, Less traveling just the two of us, less energy overall to do things outside of the usual routine, working, taking care of our daughter, sleeping. What's important for the rest of the story is that my wife started sharing some issues bothering her during this time. We have very different personalities. I'm an introvert, I like calm, I recharge my batteries when I'm alone or in a calm environment, with my family or close friends. My wife, while not being the exact opposite, is clearly tilting more towards the extrovert type of personality. She has to see her multiple groups of friends often. She likes to plan things. She has to always look toward the future and plan for what she will do next. She also likes spending quality time with just my daughter and me, of course. We made it work easily up until now. We share great times together in our home. And while she's out with her friends, I can recharge my batteries on my end as well. Now getting back to her issues as I digressed. She started telling me a few months ago that she had frustrations. I'll agree on one thing. I did not try to act on it and to help her get through it, which is a failure on my side and I now realize that. If I try to explain it, I think it falls under projection. Since I did not have any issue in our marriage, why would she? After all, only us three mattered. Everything else did not. So what if our home was not ideal? What if our bathroom was too small and unpractical? What if our sex life had gotten worse since the birth of our daughter? That's not what mattered, at least not to me, so I projected that on her and failed to try to handle this like a good spouse would. Fast forward to D-Day. I know her very well, and I started noticing weird things for the past two weeks. She was going out more often, and coming home later than usual, sometimes at 4 or 5 AM. She was a bit more secretive with her phone, and other things I won't list. But that was enough to get my mind to wander, even if I trusted her completely. I tried to convince myself at first, that I was imagining things, that she wouldn't do something like that to me, that it was simply impossible. After all, we had a two years old together, and already planning for a second child. Then one night, after one last particularly telling clue, I caved and went through her phone while she was sleeping. Hardest moment of my life. Now mind you I've read way worse in here, in hindsight my D-Day was a shock, but tame in terms of content. 
I basically just saw a kind of flirty discussion with a co-worker, but from reading the first lines nothing really special, and lots of work-related talk. She is a very friendly woman, and yes it was perhaps a bit too flirty, but not proof anything was happening. However at one point after scrolling, there it was, thank you for tonight, get home safe. At 4am, could not sleep for the remainder of the night. In the morning, I confronted her. Before telling her I saw anything, I just asked her if she was cheating on me, which she denied. After telling her I had proof that I saw the discussion, she confessed. Now I'm familiar with the concept of truth trickling but I will share her story anyway for the sake of it. She told me it happened twice and that she did not tell me and did not confess when I initially confronted her because she was planning to end it. That it was not even a thing, that there were no sentiments toward him, that she still loved me and that she just lost track of herself for the past two weeks, that she felt like she was living two different lives, that she got carried away and forced herself to not analyze it, focusing on work, that we were different, to me sex and love were going hand in hand, but she was able to compartmentalize and that is was simply that, just sex, and not even good. Of course my first question was why, because I could not fathom how she could do this to me. She immediately linked it to the frustrations above, that she was not feeling really happy for some time, that she tried talking to me about it and that I rejected it. She then felt unheard, unsupported, and sensually frustrated because I was not really listening to her needs. It's important to note that she was not trying to justify it herself as she took full accountability, granted after being confronted with proof, and she agreed that it was 100% her fault but I was trying to understand what could bring her to do something like this, and she was trying to explain it, even though it was not an excuse. Fast forward to now. I spent two days alone with family and had a six hours discussion with her afterwards. She has been love bombing me, reassuring me, promising me everything, but no way to know if this is just her panicking and afraid of losing everything, or true regret. Of course I want to stay, to take her word for it, because I love her so much. It seems that what she is telling me makes sense, after all I looked at all the texts with the AP and nothing showed sentiments. The truth is that I caved. I know what all of you will say, that I should file immediately, that this is just some trick because she is panicking, and trying to get me to stay to keep her cozy life as this is love bombing, truth trickling, and that it will happen again and I'm going to get hurt even more. I realize that, and there's a high probability that this is true, but I don't think I can go. I love her too damn much, and I love my daughter too damn much to be prepared to see her only half of the time at just two years old. If there is a chance that our marriage can work, I have to take it. After all, if her parents are still together after 40 years of marriage and a year-long infidelity, why wouldn't we be able to make it work? Edit, you guys deserved an update. First and foremost, sincere thanks to all of you. Some were harsh, some were supportive, but I tried hearing everything you were saying to help and I get why the tough love, to get your point across. Following these advice we had a deep discussion yesterday night, and she understood that keeping the job was no longer possible, and agreed to quit if that would ease my pain. After that, we will work on telling family, friends. On my side, most of my friends and family are now aware of the infidelity. On her side, she only told the sister and the best friend, the rest of her family don't know yet but we will be working on that too. I am fully aware of the risk I'm taking and I'm not deciding to take this chance while rug sweeping and forgetting it happened. I made it clear that I will not forget, that it will always be there, and that she will have to prove herself with actions more than words, over the long term. She understood that as well and showed willingness. I will continue to give update if wanted as you guys have been really supportive and helped me get through yesterday. OP, you'll find it challenging to place your trust in her once more. The bond of love is likely to erode due to this breach. It's crucial to grasp that she didn't align with the image you had envisioned. Rather, you were enamored with a version of her created in your mind. Coming to terms with the fact that the intimacy with her affair partner was satisfying, as evidenced by a repeat occurrence, is essential. Investigate whether the affair partner is committed elsewhere and inform their partner about the situation. These individuals often have a pattern of such behavior, and it's unlikely to be their initial or final transgression unless they learn from the experience. Good luck and stay strong. After years of an almost dead bedroom, I, 42 male, started getting this strange feeling that my wife, 37 female, would have done something in the lines of cheating at some point in our relationship. For some reason I never straight away asked the question but four weeks ago I felt, in my gut, the need to confront her. 
four weeks ago I looked straight into my wife's eyes and asked if she had cheated on me at some point in our life together. She was taken by surprise and her hesitation gave the first answer. So, I pushed for an honest account of what happened and my world was shattered in the ensuing minutes. She explained that back in 2016, six months after our marriage, she had a sensual affair that lasted for a month, and a half with one of her superiors. She explained that, at the time, she was panicking about the commitment of marriage. She was dealing with stuff from her past, a strong lack of self-esteem and she was having doubts about her decision to marry me. I asked for details of her affair encounters several times at his house, apparently and she seemed honest with her answers. She answers clearly, told me anything I wanted to know. I regretted asking for details as the images of her encounters with her playboy mentor haunted my mind every minute of every hour ever since, and brought me to a very dark place of rage, disgust and above all, the most excruciating sadness, an unrelenting grief and loneliness, something I have never felt in my life and that I do not wish to my worst enemy. The pain of this kind of betrayal is unfathomable. This all happened in 2016. Ever since, we had three wonderful kids. I have a good job, make a good living and have a good reputation in my field of work. She has a great job and makes an exceptional good living. We built an amazing life together. She seems honestly regretful and ashamed of what she did. After D-Day I have been trying to keep my cool and not undermine the great life we have built together. I have been avoiding at all costs to be rude or inappropriate. I have been committed to thinking this whole thing through and letting my emotions be as they come, no judgment, not trying to rush things. And guys, if you are living the same thing, let me tell you that full acceptance of your emotions, no judgment, no rationalization, seems to me the best way to go and handle the pain of the inevitably shattered self this situation creates. If you are going through this, my friend, please know you are not alone and you will survive. You will come out of this. I know who you are, my friend. You are the man that loved, whole and true. You and the man that kept his integrity. You are the soldier in the trenches of a war you did not ask for. You are the innocent bystander of someone else's brutality. You are not the one to blame. I know that about you because I just realized that about myself. I take full accountability for many things, for sure. I take responsibility for some of the unhappiness that my wife felt at the time and that might have contributed to this tragic series of events. But my accountability reaches its limits when I realize that for any part I was lacking there was something I had plenty. And that generous and loving part was not taken into consideration by my wife when she decided to drag me in the dirt of her self-serving deeds. A month ago, reality served me a long visit to hell. I hold my glass of pain and raise it in your honor, my soldier friend living a hell such as mine. Let us take it in together, certain that our souls are intact. I know mine is. Small update for all you guys. I must say I am quite surprised with all the harsh comments many of you are throwing at me. But I also understand your comments come with the good intention of helping me consider all possibilities and not let myself be manipulated or used. I understand that, believe me, and I appreciate all your wake-up calls. Following a recurrent advice from you guys, this morning, I told her about my intention of doing a paternity test to my kids. My wife didn't hesitate to agree. Then she hugged me tight, crying, saying that she will do anything it takes so I can trust her again. I'll do the test anyway. At least it will remove that dark cloud out of my mind. OP, the challenge with revelations emerging many years later, aside from the evident issues, is that she deprived you of the choice to decide whether to stay or leave. If you had been aware six months into your marriage, it's reasonable to assume that you would likely be divorced today. Instead, her deception led to the birth of three children, and now, seven years later, you find yourself in a lose-lose situation. If you choose to stay, you're stuck with enduring a difficult situation for the rest of your life. On the other hand, if you decide to leave, you'll only have your kids half the time, not to mention the looming trust issues. She betrayed your trust once, as far as you know, and may have a predisposition for such behavior. Ultimately, it boils down to how you want to shape your life. Take the time to contemplate this with a clear mind and ensure that your judgment remains unclouded. Good luck and stay strong. Thank you so much for watching till the end. If you really like my videos then don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Have a good day.